welcome to another um, episode of Inspired Good Fat Life. And I am so excited about our guest today because he's like one of my favorite people on the planet. And um, not just him as a person, but the um, care he provides because my body um, needs chiropractic, right? <laughs> We have, I, I'm not kidding, um, when we moved from um, Ohio to Michigan, I was in such need for my chiropractic care that my husband was literally knocking on doors in our neighborhood, asking people <laughs> if they knew of a good chiropractor. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how important um, what you do is as part of my self-care. Good. I'm glad we found each other, <laughs> Yes, I am too. <laughs> you didn't knock on my door. I, I, I didn't, but yeah. we found yeah. We found you, right? <laughs> so, um, so welcome. Well, welcome. it's great yeah. to be here, Sherry. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me today. Of, of course. So um, I love what you do, and I love your office and your attitude and... Um, and your energy. Thanks. And so tell us, you know, tell us about chiropractic. What yeah. is chiropractic? Because there's a lot of misconception out there. Well, it can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And um, I think chiropractic is amazing, but I think it doesn't do a great job of really educating its public um, what it does. You can go to 10 different chiropractors and get 10 different ideals about it, which is a good and bad thing. You know, it's good because we're all challenging each other and we're not just all following the status quo. We're always challenging each other. To me, chiropractic is just the practice of finding better engineering for your body. So I basically practice the idea that there's a proper alignment for your body that is just more efficient. Sitting up straight. It's just more right? efficient. And there's a, there's a range of motions and positions that your body's just more efficient in. It's going to be stronger. It's going to have better endurance. It's going to hold up to life and gravity and stress better. And that normal natural life just deforms. So through a process of what I call micro traumas, those little things that you do a lot and a lot of those you can't get away from, you know, like the way, what? the way you, the way you lean, when you, when you like are concentrating on somebody talking, the position that you sleep in kind of your default positions that you just return to all the time. Um, those over time will, will kind of wear things out. Your repetitive stresses, the way you sit at your desk, you approach your desk for 40 hours a week. All right. So those micro traumas then combined with the macro traumas, the bigger things that you have, the slips, trips and falls, the car accidents, the sports injuries, all those things over time start to slowly deform the spine. And most people, when you talk about that, they'll, you know, they can, they'll, they can figure out the, the macro traumas, but we fail to recognize the effects of our daily entropy and stress and what it does. Those little things that you do every single day for 20, 30, 40 years add up to a huge degree and can be just as bad as a car accident over time. So you know, for me, a chiropractor's experience should be, you know, one, first off, you know, exploration. So we find out what is going on, what are the, the results of those repetitive stresses and traumas. We tie that back to how you're feeling, how you're functioning, um, and why most patients come into our office is most patients find us because of pain. That's where they start. <laughs> they start because they're in pain and they come in because of that. So we try to correlate their position and how they move with their symptoms and then correlate that to their lifestyle. And then as we dive into care, I always love the model of, all right, so we adjust, we edu educate, and then we inspire. So the education process is, you know, making sure you understand what the problem is really, really well, because the better you understand the problem, um, the more you're going to understand the care, the more you're going to understand the steps that we take going forward. Um, on top of that, we layer um, education on what you should do outside of the office. So we start off with just the small things, just sleeping positions and sitting positions. And then we work our way into exercise and nutrition and mental health. And and then we just repeat, you know, we just repeat, repeat. the message and repeat yeah. the message. So I always think, I always uh, talk to our docs and our providers that, if your only thing that you do when a patient comes in is just lay hands on them and adjust them, you're not, you're not performing chiropractic care. It has to come with that story, that message, that next step, the reason that they're there, the reason what they're going to feel when they leave there and what you're going to work on next time you come back. All right. Those are the big things right. that we work on our office. So, you know, I mean, you know this, but I don't know if our listeners do. My, my grandpa was a chiropractor. Okay. 1945 yeah. he graduated yeah. and and um he, it was an uphill battle they were still throwing chiropractors in jail for <laughs> practicing without a medical license <laughs> we're not medical but, doctors <laughs> right well and um it well and he went to school and got his degree and everything yeah. and so i mean i was raised it raised with that um 
And and you're right. It wasn't just about the adjusting and, and yeah. your spine. It yeah. was also what you ate yeah. and and how you slept and the thoughts you think. And and honestly, that's my, my that's my favorite part of about what I do. I, I I like to adjust. It's a it's a physical process. I'm athletic and I like doing it. But what I love is just the the interactions that I get with our patients, just the um, the relationships that we form and the conversations that we get into. Like I have patients that have cried with me in a room over emotional things and challenged each other over things in their health that they, and little roadblocks in their health that they just can't get around. So I just love being that emotional support for people on top of that, you know, coach that helps them lead them down those paths, you know? Um, but I think chiropractic has, has an extremely important role overall in our health community right now um, because the fact that like, Baby boomers create a huge bulge with everything they do in every stage of their life. And now baby boomers are in that, that, that health and manage health and medical stage of their life. So I mean, if you talk to anybody that either works in medicine or is in a hospital or has to interact with them, it's a frustrating experience because they're overrun right now. And I really think chiropractors create an excellent, very safe, um, very convenient, affordable first step for people to help learn how to be healthier and how to get stronger. And so they don't end up in emergency rooms where they're, you know, one of a hundred other people are there that they just aren't getting treated because they're just overrun with such a huge group of people that are coming in that are health, that aren't, aren't healthy at them. Well, and you bring up something that I was in, went to the emergency room. This is probably, I don't know, six, eight years ago. Cause I was having shortness of breath and my arm hurt. And uh -huh. I was like, Oh, I, I was sure I was fine, but that you just don't know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and now I have grandkids, and so yeah. I want to be around. Um, not that I wouldn't otherwise, but more of an incentive, right? Yeah. And it after going through all those tests and doing everything, I can't, then I came to see you, and you're like, <laughs> like oh, ribs you out, yeah. your ribs are <laughs> out, and then it was fine. Yeah. And and so it was just that nice reminder. Yeah. That um, when your body's out of alignment or your ribs are out yeah. or something, I mean, you don't, don't get me wrong. If you're in emergency exactly. and having a heart attack or you broke a bone, it, you should not be in my office. Exactly. <laughs> you I mean, not, but we're not your first step. And it's not, but it's not. There's one or the other. It's like you need yeah. both. Yep. You Got need it. both. And so, talk about because I'm always amazed at how much um, our our spine working properly yeah. um, contributes to how the spinal fluid works. Yeah. And some of those things. Could you talk about that for a minute? Yeah. So when I, when patients first come in the office, I usually approach and try to connect to them about their care through the mechanics of chiropractic because it's easier to understand. People are mechanically minded for the most part, especially in this area. So understanding just the, the mechanics and engineering of every body when they first come in and you just get them understanding chiropractic. But long term, I always try to shift it shift the conversation to the nervous system. And yeah, we're not just stacking up 24 blocks upright to keep you more efficient. We're stacking those 24 blocks to protect your spinal cord and your nervous system. Um, so, that, you know, it goes to then next, you know, what does a chiropractor treat? And depending on where you look online, you will read that chiropractors treat everything or nothing at all. And, and, and I was the, with patients when they come in here, I was, cause they'll come in, I have patients that come in, oh, my, my daughter's wetting the bed. Can you, I've heard chiropractic can help with that. My answer to that is, no, it, it can help with it. It is not a treatment for it. But when you take pressure off nerves that go to the bladder and help stimulate areas of the brain that are responsible for that reflex arc, your body's just going to function better. So let's just give it a try. You know, they're mm -hmm. going to be healthier kids from it. They're going to have healthier, stronger bodies from it. I'm not treating that condition. I'm helping your body treat itself and helping your helping your body function better to get in a healthier spot on its own. Chiropractors are another awesome role within chiropractic, within the medical, as we just think differently. Um, we think from more a proactive mindset for one, but we also think from, yeah, we aren't treating the symptom here. We're treating, we're treating the person, we're treating the, the, the person in the organism, not just the symptom. When my kids get sick, and they get a fever, my first response is, oh, let's suppress the fever and give them a cough suppress. And my, my first response is, oh, the immune system doing, is doing its work. Right. Let's support right. it. Let's make sure that it continues to do what it's supposed to do so he can get back to health or she can get back to health quickly. Not just treating right. symptoms and that are then right. going to lead to another problem and another problem and another problem down the road. Well, and so we were, you, we were talking a little um, about some 
testing that we're doing about yeah. being proactive, right? Yep. So not just going to see you to be because my neck hurts yep. or my back hurts, but going to see you so that my neck doesn't hurt yeah. and my back doesn't hurt. Yeah. Because um, what I'm learning as I'm getting older is that um, it's easy to stop doing things or to do be doing more, especially th- like through COVID. Yeah. Like we sat more. And we didn't do the things. We leaned towards comfort because we, we were leaned for what, yeah. right. We leaned towards comfort, and after a couple of years, it's like it becomes a way of life. And so I had the opportunity um, a couple of times in the last few years to do some um, uh, hiking, mm-hmm. like right. And so this last time I was out in Sedona, and we were hiking up this mountain, very big mountain. <laughs> Is like a, a 1.2 miles up um and but the, the the point of it is is that i found that there was there was times that my body was failing yeah. failing me and it scared the bejeebers out of me in the sense of like oh my gosh i don't want to lose the capability to move yep. and so um you know like we've talked about how important it is to do things proactively so that you know those weaknesses and they're not, um, and they're, and you don't learn about them. So I'm so grateful, you know, for the, the pain on the way down and the support that I had. Um, but because I'm like, I don't want to lose that capability, (laughs) but I'm losing it. (laughs) I think, I think for everybody and for our, our patients, I, um, one of my favorite things is when they're, and I think we all have to shift with our with our health if we want to be healthy long term is where your care and your health shifts from how you're feeling to how your how your body's healing all right because your body is going to heal at different rates based on how well you treat it you know there's no amount of chiropractic care or good nutrition or good exercise then it's going to prevent you from all the weird stuff that just happened in life you know acute things are going to happen but healthy people heal quickly from those acute things healthy people oh, have that healthy people yeah. have that mm-hmm. acute stress that hits them okay. you know their body makes that adaptation and heals and gets back to health quickly unhealthy people they go from that acute to chronic to permanent so i always tell that to patients yeah we want to transition from how you're feeling to how you're healing we're We've just kind of been trained this way where um because we're such a symptom driven like health community that how we feel is how health we are so most people will do enough work to stop feeling that way and then they'll stop so it's okay. i use the analogy it's like you know your house catches on fire you you know come in you put out the fire and then you just go right back into living it again you don't ever rehab the body you don't ever rehab the cells you don't ever get your body healing well again you just go right back to beating up on it again <laughs> instead of instead of continuing yep. to and continuing to to let your body heal and let those cells regenerate and heal you know we, by the by the time the pain goes away you're only 50% of the way towards the healing process. There's still a lot of soft tissue healing that needs to happen when you have an injury that if you just jump right back into life again, you're just setting yourself up for another de- disaster later on down the road. Well, so, I mean, th- those are, that's good to know. I really, I like that um, analogy. That's yeah. a great analogy. And, and it's also, um, it's kind of like a wake up call too. It's like, oh gosh, I really have been um, not pushing you know, it's just easier as we get older. It's like I was saying to my husband, I go, you're not pushing yourself hard yeah. very anymore. Um, and he goes like, I don't want to. I've <laughs> right? <done that>. done, <laughs> been, been there, done that. Yeah. Right? But the truth is, is, you know, we, we read all these studies that say is that we don't have to age the way we do. It's it's lifestyle that ages us the way we age. Exactly. Entropy is going to happen. Right. You know, en- entropy is going to happen to all of us. Um, entropy is something that is happening 100% of the time completely passive it takes no it takes no energy on our end it takes no thought process on our end it just happens to both of us 100 percent of our life um, what i always try to remind myself and remind my patients is that the cool part about a human body is that uh, healing is happening 100 percent of the time rejuvenation new cells new tissues new organs are always being reproduced and remanufactured every second of your life the hard part is that, that process takes a lot of good energy and takes a lot of good nutrition a lot of good movement a lot of good oxygen yeah. a lot of good sunlight a lot of good brain to body connection through your nervous system so i was trying to focus on all right is your entropy outweighing your recovery as are you giving your body enough for it to heal up from the just natural entropy that's happening without you having to even think about it 
So give me an example. How would you how would you advise your patients to stay ahead of that curve? Um, you know, it's never just one. It's never just one thing. Um, my biggest thing right now that I'm working on getting people doing more is just is just getting outside. You know, Got it. I was listening to. I can't remember what podcast I was listening to. It was it was in between sleep, and I just kind of halfway heard it, and it just lodged in my mind. There's all these like health things that are out there right now, like these cool like health lights that you can stand in front of and these things that help drive oxygen in your cells and tissues. And the, the guy doing the podcast said, this is basically what nature is. <laughs> <laughs> so just Instead of spending tens of thousands of dollars, let's just get outside Go a little outside. bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just the power of, of, of sunlight on your eyes, what it does in morning and afternoon, the power of just natural air that hasn't been recycled through your house over and over. So, um, you know, it's, it's that it's, it's finding a way into nature a lot more. It's finding a way to get movement every single day of your life. You have to get movement. Our, our bodies are meant to move. Our human bodies are not meant to sit. We just, we just sit way too much. And there's, there's this, uh, there's just this, uh, this, I feel, feel like I spend a hundred, 90% of my time at work just begging people to work out. And I just don't know how to get people to, to do it more. But talk about your movement snacks. Those yeah, are those, very those are inspiring. Gr- yeah, those yeah. are great. And I don't, I don't, I think the first time I heard that term was from Ben Greenfield. I don't think he was the originator of it. I think, uh, I'm not sure where it came from originally, but it's just the idea that, that exercise and movement can happen anywhere at any time. It doesn't have to be this perfect half hour, 45 minutes in the gym. It can be, oh, I've got 10 minutes to my next appointment. I'm going to grab a kettlebell and I'm going to do 100 swings. All right. Mm. Not because I care at all how many calories you burn, um, but because your body requires it for circulation, for uh, stimulation to your brain, um, for just muscular control, for just anti-fragility. As you get older, you have to move. Right. There's, uh, there's, there's no bigger stick that we have out there to improve improve our health and just movement and exercise. Well, and everything's saying that, you know, yeah. now all the research just keeps saying move. Yeah. That's the article be, that I'm, yeah. I'm writing for our next, uh, um, our next, uh, good fat life is all about movement and the, the fact that like, there's all, there's all this great research about exercise and what it does for us, but still like people just Don't ignore care. it. It's like, I, I get it. It's, it's, <laughs> It's, you know, it's accessible for everybody. Right. It's affordable for everybody. You just have to be creative and you have to just not be like paralyzed with perfection where, oh, if I can't get that perfect hour workout in, I might as well not do anything. Like a little bit of something's better than nothing. Just get out there and start moving. Yeah. And once you start moving, then you can optimize if you like, you know, all right, how do I make the most out of this half hour next time I do it? Yeah. You should always try to level up and optimize with the exercise. Walking's great in the beginning, but end of the day, walking is just an activity of daily living. We've got to get you moving more your joints, but just start, take the first step, and build on it. Bill, does yard work count? Yard work counts, after, yeah. After we're yes. done, I'm going to go, I have, yeah. I have to cut some plants it's, back. It's exercise it doesn't have to be <laughs> formal. It could be dancing with your kids. Yep. It could be yard work. It could be any number of things. Just We just have to, just have have to, to find ways it. to move more. Right. Um, it's about more than than calories and weight loss. And that's why 90% of people are in a gym. And that's why, you know, 90% of them fail at the gym because they don't just don't have a bigger why of why they're there. It's just about calories and, and vanity. And there's so much more from exercise than just calorie burning. Well, and you can tell the difference in people who move and people who don't. Yeah. They're just, they look different. Yeah. Their energy's different. Yeah. Their, I don't know, eyes glow differently, yeah. right? <laughs> And I mean, it's another huge reason that chiropractic can, should be a huge part of our health community because we are so movement oriented um, and because so many people sit so chronically and posture is so unbelievably important to your overall know, health. It's a, up, yeah, it's, an, it's such an under, um, underrated and undervalued aspect of one's health, but it affects more than just mechanical effects. Neurological, we just talked about, it affects you organically. If you're rounded in on yourself, you can't can't breathe. You can't expand your lungs. Your internal organs get kind of compromised. It affects your hormonal balance within your body. Um, not to mention your appearance and your nonverbal communication that you give to the people around you and internal yeah. communication to yourself. Yeah. You know, that numbed it in it just makes you feel. Well, and I know, I know when I, the days that I get some 
uh, some other movement other than just running around doing, you know, doing the day, um, I, I feel like a different person. Yeah. I, I like me better. <laughs> And the people around me probably like me better too. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's so easy. You use a very key term is how you feel. And I don't know where to attribute this from either because I'm stealing it from somebody else. But it's it's the idea of not letting, not letting your habits be led by how you feel, L- letting how you feel be led by your habits. Like I've been, I get up and work out in the morning at like 5.30, less than... Less than maybe ninety percent of the time, I do not want to get up. I do not feel like getting up and work working out. Like I, I never really? want to. I never want to get out of bed and work okay. out. But one hundred percent of the di- time, I'm rewarded for doing it the rest of the day with my energy, with how I feel, with how I think, with how I approach the day going forward, just more positively. Like one hundred percent of the time, it improves how I feel. That is so interesting. Rarely do I ever feel like doing it, but one hundred percent of the time, it improves how I feel and makes the rest yeah. of my day better. And I would say that I, I, a hundred percent of the time I feel, I feel better. I just feel more engaged, alive, all those things. But I always assume probably that, that people like you that work out regularly, really work out regularly, love it. Yeah. And so. (laughs) Other days I'm like, uh, but I, So good to know, good to know, right? I'm a sucker for competition and games. Oh, okay. So I just work that into like the you know, the wearables that I use, I'll have some weird little gamification that I'm like, well, I got to get my points in. So I right. <laughs> go out there and grind it out. You just got to know what your, you know what your carrots are and, and lean into them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My husband and I are taking French, okay. um, online French Duolingo, and I'm up to nice. like 567 days or something, but um, there's you get plenty of badges days. for I, like, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. plenty of days I don't want to do it, but yeah. it's like, damn, I want my I points. I want to get my badge. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> But, I don't want to miss a day. Exactly. But it hits like a dopamine <laughs> trigger in my brain. Exactly. <laughs> it, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And um, I'm going to get it. Yeah, I'm a so, sucker for all that stuff. It's yeah, so I interesting. Fall for it every time. So if somebody's going to come, I mean, what would you, so for somebody who's never gone to the chiropractor, what, yeah. what's, what do they expect? What, what does a visit look like? Yeah. So I, you know, like we said, like it can be so varied. Um, what I, what I expect from my offices that I work in and from my associates that work with me is, one, patients, you have to have a great evaluation and you have to have a great history and first day with people. You have to know their, why they're here, what's going on with their life. For me, I, I do value x-rays. Um, I think for, I know there's chiropractors that, that you know, will practice without them. For me, I think they're extremely valuable. One from just uh, just the protocols for me, it's like, you know, if I had to drive from here to California, I could probably figure it out. But if I had a really good roadmap, I would probably do much more efficient driving to get there. So I feel like it creates my efficiency with me doing my job. It definitely improves the safety. It tells me a lot about what type of technique I should use with a patient. With a chiropractic can be anything from these big firm twisting, popping, cracking things that you've seen on YouTube to very, very light force. And I learn a lot about how I should adjust based on what I see on x-rays. So, you know, having that um, is great for me, but it's even better for the patient because Mm -hmm. it's excellent um, education. No longer is it just a low back pain. It's a low back pain due to pelvic and leveling that was caused by holding your kids on one side all the time. No longer is it just a neck pain. It's a neck pain that's a result of sitting at your desk. And it just gives more drivers Mm -hmm. in real life as opposed to, oh, it's just a pain that just happens when I turn 40. It's it's a pain that happens when you turn 40 due to a history of repetitive stresses doing the same thing the same way that if you just made a couple small decisions in your life, you wouldn't need me all that much anymore. <laughs> you know? So yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's key. Number one is, is day one, have a great day one. We have a really good reporting system with patients where we go through exactly everything that we see on the x-rays, exactly what they should expect from me. And then, you know, we go through what their goals are as patients. Um, I have my goals when patients come in. I want to get them out of pain. I want to do as much spinal correction as we can long-term, stabilize it, and then maintain it. Some patients, they just come in and they want to get out of pain. It's okay. If that's where they're at in their health journey right now, I'm happy to do that. But I'm going to make sure I educate them really well while they're here. I'm not going to make them feel bad about not going forward with care. It's not about sales or anything like that. It's just educating. So maybe later on down the road, five years, that seed kind of plants. And they think, all right, now I need to start adding layers into my health instead of just treating it as a one-time symptom. 
So from there, as patients get set up with care, I really like the process of like prepping patients for an adjustment. So when patients come in, I have them lay down and do heat and traction for a couple minutes. Most patients come in after just a day of stress of sitting at a desk or just deadlines or whatever. And it's just great to get them out of gravity and get stress and tension off their spine. It makes the adjustment move a lot easier. It's a very calming thing to do for them. It just kind of down regulates that, that fight or flight mode. So when I come yeah. into adjust, they're just more relaxed. It makes my job a lot easier. It makes the response to the adjustment that much better. So I love that. Yeah. So yeah. we always start off, you know, like I said, for 90% of our patients, they're their why for day one is their pain. So, you know, we start off, our goal is, yeah, we're going to get you out of pain as quickly and efficiently as possible. And once that pain is gone, we're going to layer on top of that um, tools that you can use at home. We, try, we use a lot of traction wedges that patients use at home and postural exercises that you use at home. And then we start digging into repetitive stress, right? How do you sleep at home? How do you sit at home? You know, how do you, as simple and stupid as how do you get out of a chair? Because all those little right. things over time do add up. Um, and as we get more and more sedentary, our functional ability to get out of chairs and get off the ground and even s something as simple as, as like breathing and deep belly breathing really gets eradicated, it really gets destroyed. It's, it is so interesting. I mean, you know, I feel, I feel pretty agile and mobile and flexible and all that till I get around my grandkids. Yeah. And then it's <laughs> oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, it is just, and it's not bad. It's just an awareness yep. of, because because without having that like benchmark, yeah. you just don't notice it. In tribes of adults that live in non-sedentary lives, they don't lose that. They continue to, they, <laughs> they, they squat at down you know, around right. fires. They don't sit down in chairs back like this where the chair does all the work for them. They sit and they squat and they move and they never, they, they maintain that throughout their life. They continue to move like that. That's amazing. I mean, and, and it's encouraging in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I made the choice. And they don't get the hip choice. replacement, Mister <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, that is so interesting. Yeah. It's that we're, we, we're making a choice without realizing that we're making a choice. I mean, modernity has done so many amazing things for us, but it also has created created issues within our body. So it's like it's a, like that mesh point between like enjoying the the comforts of modernity but also realizing that your body needs challenge and it needs discomfort and it needs to be pushed and it needs to move and it needs to have those good stresses so when real stresses of life do hit your body knows what to do with it knows what to do hmm. well okay so um i know that you had mentioned that you wanted to do something special yeah uh, so tell us about that yeah so if anybody is interested and wants to just learn more about chiropractic i am I, i'm i'm in chiropractic for the long-term relationships not to make a bunch of money off a of day one with the patient. So I have no problem giving away day one for somebody to come in and learn more. And what they do with that information is completely up to them. So uh, we pray, uh, created a promo code just for Good Fat Life, Good Fat Life um, 2023. If you call up the office and you just reference that, they can get a complete day one and a report of findings on us. So, you know, um, complete uh, review of your history, exam, you know, any necessary x-rays that we need to take, and then sitting down and going over all that together. Um, if we feel, find out like we're not the right place for it, you, we can put all your x-rays on a thumb drive and you can take them somewhere else. You can just have them for your records. I just recommend people get baselines on their body at a younger age. Uh, I found s severe scoliosis in people in their sixties that had no idea that had no, I had no idea that they had stress fractures in their low back in there that probably happened 30 years ago. And I think why don't we treat our spines the way we treat our teeth and, and, and have early records of how it's aging, how it's decaying, how it's breaking down instead of waiting until it's a total disaster and then try to try to make up for time, you know? Right. Wow, like, that's a great point. Yeah. So if anybody, if anybody has any interest, if you're not around this area um, and you can't come to our office, um, let me know and I can try to find somebody in your area that'll, that'll pass on the same offer that, that, you know, has the same passion for chiropractic as we do. Um, but yeah, we, we just want to like spread what chiropractic can do to more people because there are so many people that are afraid of it and they're afraid of it just because they don't understand it or they don't know it or they've heard something that isn't even true about chiropractic, you know? So, well, and I know just from my own self, two things. One, I learned, I used to have a lot of low back pain uh -huh. and um, I learned to sleep differently. 
Yeah. Right? I had yeah. to hook my foot over my <laughs> leg to change the way that I slept yeah. at night. And once I did that, yeah, and yeah. once I did that, um, the back pain went away. Yeah. And, I love simple fixes and, and for, for health. And I, I mean, so it's like, who knew, right? Things that if you just address them early enough can be super, super impactful. Well, it's but, huge. Yeah. It was absolutely huge. And then um, I also know when I get an adjustment um, with my neck, I, I might, I just think clearer. Yeah. It's like, oh, getting the. It's not just about, you know, it's, it's the incoming and outgoing messages. So um, how much, how much fact and how much is, is lore from this story? I don't know, but. The the story the story behind the the first the first chiropractic oh, adjustment okay. it's the the story that goes like this like D.D. Dee Dee Palmer is, is like you know slaving away of the science of chiropractic and what it means and he's onto this idea that you know the the power to being healthy lies within the, the nervous system back I mean this is like 1800s we just still don't know what the heck nerves do at that point in time so he's slaving away at this idea and mapping out the spinal nerve roots and everything and he has this uh, in the building that he's at there's this janitor there that works in there Harvey. Lillard and he um, you know he's working late one night and Harvey's hard of hearing is deaf in one ear and he said Harvey lay down on the table I want to uh, I'm going to adjust you and adjust his spine and as the horse story goes probably more lore than fact that immediately he wakes up and hears the clock ticking on the wall <laughs> so so the story goes like he didn't adjust he didn't adjust a nerve root up in the neck that would be associated with a cranial nerve. He adjusted somewhere in the mid back. And the idea is, you know, that adjustment stimulated an area of, the, of, of Mr. Lillard's brain that had been dormant and it just needed a stimulation. And I've seen some really interesting things in my office that I would never say that I, that what I did was a treatment for that, but just really fascinating side effect that I had a patient that couldn't smell. It didn't even bring it up in, didn't even bring it up in the consultation. And she comes back for for her, say, her day one after her first adjustment. I said, well, how did you do after the adjustment? She said, well, I did good. And I walked in the door and I, I, I told my husband, well, dinner really smells good tonight. And I didn't know that she could smell. I said, well, Adam, what happened? He's like, well, you don't understand. I, I haven't been able to smell for 10 years. So and that's not saying that I treat like if you are hard, right. if you're harder smelling, don't come beating down my door <laughs> looking for a, a super treatment. It's just to say that the body has immense capability of healing itself. And just try simple things first. Just try simple things to achieve, achieve better health. And stimulation of your brain, better posture, and exercise and nutrition are simple things that can get you 90% of the way there in most cases if you start working on it early enough. Right. So that's, well, and that's the whole point of Good Fat Life. Yeah. It's like we are a connector. Start having the stories right? and Start the communications. Have, right. And, yeah. and so um, how can we tell let people like you, it's a, it's a medium. It's a medium so that people like you can, can talk to our readers and yes. let them know that, hey, you might want to try this or yeah. consider this <laughs> and see what happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Make, it an, make it an adventure and a journey. So thank you so much for yeah, being you, here. I appreciate you starting all this and you're doing a great job. The magazine looks amazing, especially the back cover. Looks <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This back cover <laughs> is, I don't know if you can see it, these very handsome children on the back cover. So um, it's its such, I don't know, it's such a journey. And I, I just love all the inspiration you bring as thank well you. as... Um, the expertise. Thank you. I appreciate right? you sharing. <laughs> right. Thank you very yeah. much. You're so, doing a great yeah. job. <laughs> Thank you so much. So check out Good Fat Life. And as Dr. Rushford said, we are um, in process of curating our next issue. And uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's all good. It's all a journey. And um, so check out, we will have all of Hands on Health Chiropractic. Yep. Um, we'll have all the show notes in our notes and um, right now we just encourage you to go out and live your good fat life thank you Sherry <laughs> thank you